Hey, we're getting back into Colossians chapter one, and um, I'm going to start in 24, but we're going to just work through to the end of the chapter today. Um, and so in Colossians chapter one, verse 24, he says, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh, I'm filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. And for this I toil, struggling with all of his energy that he so powerfully works within me. And so a couple points in here I want to point out is that he's saying that God's given him a stewardship. Okay, He was given a stewardship from God, so a responsibility, a job, right? A purpose. He was given a stewardship or responsibility for God for them, okay? for the church, for the Gentile church, right? But not just the Gentiles, for the Gentiles and the Jews, for the church at large, okay? That God gave him a stewardship for the church. But what was the stewardship? What was the responsibility? It says to make the word of God fully known, okay? And then he goes on, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. Okay, so God gave him a stewardship, a responsibility to make the word of God fully known. Okay, and that word of God, he's talking about the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now it's been revealed to his saints. Remember, the saints is the church. It's just believers. All believers make up the body of Christ. Those are the saints. Hagios, the holy ones, okay? It says, to them, to the saints, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. He keeps using this word, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says him, Christ, we proclaim, warning everyone, teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Okay, And so this is what he's, his purpose is, right? To make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages. Um, and, and he says, for, for this, is what, this is what they proclaim. They proclaim Jesus Christ and they warn everybody. They teach everybody with all wisdom um, that they may present everyone mature in Christ. The reason he wants everybody mature is because then they're, they're stable, right? They're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They're rooted and they're grounded in Christ. They're, they're not able to be moved off of the true gospel, right? He says, for this I told Oil, struggling with all of his energy that he powerfully works within me. And Paul was struggling and he was toiling through all the persecution, through shipwrecks, through beatings and imprisonments and all the things he was enduring. He was struggling and toiling and working hard. This was his single-minded focus though, to, to make known to them the mystery, to make the word of God fully known to them and to bring the church to maturity. Hey, that was Paul's purpose. In order to fully understand this passage, what I want to do is I want to go to another um, section of the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon, these were all letters that were written along with Philippians um, while Paul was in prison. And actually Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon were all carried to the churches of Asia Minor by Tychicus, okay? So he was the messenger that carried these letters to these three churches. They were all written at the same time, written to churches that were in the same area who were also facing the same kinds of threats, okay? And so Paul wrote Ephesians at the same time he wrote Colossians. And Ephesians chapter three, Paul's basically teaching the same thing there as he was teaching in this passage of Colossians that we just read, but it's more detailed. There's more information there, okay? And so I wanna go into that chapter um, so that we can fully understand what Paul is teaching. So in Ephesians chapter three, Paul says this, for this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles. And this is one of those things Paul's suffering. He says, I'm suffering for your sake. This is what he means. He's a prisoner on their behalf. The reason he's in prison, why? The Jews didn't like that he was talking about salvation going to the Gentiles, right? This is what they accused him of um, when he was in Jerusalem, okay? And this is the initial reason why they hated him and falsely accused him and had him put in prison. Okay, so for this reason, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. Okay, so again, Paul mentions now here in Ephesians, this stewardship, this responsibility, this purpose or calling that God had given Paul for them, okay? How the mystery was made known to me by revelation. Again, he uses this word mystery. We're going to go into why in a minute, okay? As I have written briefly, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, 
as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Okay? So this is something that wasn't made known to other generations. Okay? They didn't know about this. It's a mystery that's now been revealed to us now. Okay? And why does Paul keep using this word mystery? Okay? For one, it was a mystery. There was things that were alluded to in the Old Testament that, that even the prophets who were giving the prophecies didn't fully understand um, what God was going to bring to pass um, in, in Jesus' time okay? and in Paul the Apostle's time. But, but on the other hand, there was a specific threat that was facing these churches, the Gentile churches in general, but specifically the churches in Asia Minor. Um, and that was that there was a teaching in these areas um, of, of sort of a, a hidden knowledge, right, that could be sought out. There were mystery cults. They called them mystery religions. The reason they called them that is because they were very secretive. They had rituals and practices um, that, that were secretive, and the, the members could get in trouble uh, for, for revealing those things to the outside world. But, but what they were teaching, um, although they had different forms of these, um, what they were teaching basically was that there was a hidden knowledge that could be revealed or sought out um, by these uh, divinities or celestial beings or spirits or angels or whatever they may have called them in that specific cult right but the, the the idea was that you could seek out a hidden knowledge or wisdom from these spirit beings through asceticism which is a, a harshness to the body um, sort of denying yourself for a religious thing it might be extreme fasting or deprivation of some kind um, there was um, um, just meditation and seeking out visions from these spirit beings who would then interact with you and reveal to you things that you would have no other way of knowing unless you had interacted with these ancient beings that have been around since the beginning of time. Um, and, and, and so they may say to the believers in this area, that's great. Christ is one of those divinities, those aeons, those celestial beings and spirits that you could seek out and he'll give you vision revelation, but he's not the only one. And if you want more, you need to seek out these other ones. And so just kind of incorporate Christ into the whole pantheon of deities that we seek out in worship, right? And this is still practiced today. In fact, the more that I do these Bible studies and put them out online, the more that I'm actually interacting with and running into people who believe this and practice this. And it's not exactly the same as it was in Paul's day, right? But, but Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun, okay? When something seems new today, it's already been in ages past, right? And so there's people who are doing this today. Okay, Christ is um, wonderful, and we're going to seek out the Christ mind, right? We're going to um, um, seek out Christ for the revelations he can give us, and sometimes they'll just call him Yeshua, okay? But they'll seek out um, Christ for the revelations he can give them, right? But He's just one of many, and we're going to seek out these other divinities as well. The fact is, those are not divinities. They're not divinities. They're not divine. In fact, they're not even good. Those are lying, deceiving spirits. Paul the Apostle called them rulers and authorities and principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Bible teaches that Satan even will reveal himself as an angel of light, as he does has done in times past, right? And so these spirits are deceiving. Their, their job is to lie and to manipulate and to just deceive, to be worshipped, to pretend to be divine. And yes, there are other spirits and there is knowledge that they will give you. They have knowledge, right? Because they've existed for a very long time in the earth, right? But the purpose of these spirits is not benevolent and good. The purpose is to deceive. And the Bible forbids seeking out these spirits through uh, mediums and necromancers and... <clears throat> This is something that we're not supposed to practice. And there's a reason because when you interact with these spirits, you're interacting with evil spirits, right? And so the, the purpose of Paul in writing these letters was to expose some of these things. In fact, Paul's done that in many ways, even in Colossians and passages we've already read where he says, okay, let me give you an image. Let me give you the truth. Let me give you the bigger picture of who Jesus actually is. And remember, he said he's the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn over all creation for by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. Those four things are rankings of demonic spirits, okay? Everything was created through him and for him. And he's before all things. And in Christ, all things hold together. And he's the head of the body, the church, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile all things to himself in heaven and on earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. Okay, this is who Jesus is. Jesus is God. Jesus is creator God. He created everything, including the spirits that you're seeking out. Okay, but what I'm telling you, he's going to tell us in Colossians chapter two, that all the, 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 <clears throat> 
all wisdom and knowledge is revealed to us in Christ, okay? He's going to say um, this mystery hidden for ages and generations is now revealed to his saints, okay? And this is what Paul's telling us, right? I was given a stewardship to reveal, to fully make known this mystery to the church, okay? And in verse 6 of Ephesians chapter 3, he says this, this mystery is, okay? So I'm going to tell you what the mystery is, so you don't have to look for it anywhere else. I'm just going to tell you right now. Are you ready? He says the mystery is this that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. There's three things Paul says here. Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What do these three things mean? Let's take them one at a time, okay? It says Gentiles are fellow heirs. Well, fellow heirs with who, okay? Well, the clue is in the word Gentiles, right? Because Gentiles is only used by one group of people and that is the Jews. And they use the word Gentiles to, differen to differentiate themselves, okay, the Jews, from everyone else that existed on the earth, okay? So anyone who was not a Jew was a Gentile. And so when you say Gentiles are fellow heirs, that can only mean they're fellow heirs with one group of people, and that would be the Jews, okay? So the mystery is, that's been revealed to the apostles and prophets, to the saints in these last days, he says that the Gentiles, okay, everyone who's not Jewish, are fellow heirs with the Jews, okay? That's the first point. The second is this, that they're members of the same body. Well, who's members of what body, okay? Well, the Gentiles are members of the same body as who? Well, as the Jews, of course, the only other people that exist on the earth, okay? And so the Gentiles are fellow heirs with the Jews, members of the same body as the Jews. But what is this body, okay? Well, the body is the body of Christ, right? In 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 12, Paul says this, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Okay, Galatians also said, if you are, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay, so let's go back to our passage. Okay. This mystery is this, that Gentiles are fellow heirs with the Jews, members of the same body as the Jews, and that body is the body of Christ, okay? And the third is this, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, okay? Partakers of what promise? Well, the promise is to the Jews, okay? There were covenants made with Abraham. There was a covenant made with Moses, okay? <laughs> there was a covenant made with David, in fact. Okay? But the promise is made to Abraham of a land and of a people. In fact, the name Abraham is father of many nations, okay? Right? Not just the Jews, okay? So what this mystery is, is that Gentiles, okay, who are not biological descendants of Abraham, are fellow heirs with the biological descendants of Abraham, members of the same body as the biological descendants of Abraham. In other words, this body is that that tree where the, the natural branches are there, some are cut off, and then um, other wild branches are grafted in, but they're all one tree, right? This is the body of Christ, and they're partakers of the promises, the promises to Abraham, okay? Um, as the Jews, as the biological descendants of Abraham, in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Okay? And Paul goes on, he says, of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the workings of his power. To me, though I'm the very least of all the saints, okay, because he persecuted the church, he says this. This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone, both Jews and Gentiles, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to who? to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places, okay? He's talking about the demonic spirits again, okay? This was according to the eternal purpose that he, God, has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, okay? So this is the eternal purpose of God, that the Jews and the Gentiles would be fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the same promises in Jesus Christ through the gospel, okay? This is his eternal purpose. This is not an addendum. This is not something that he, that he went, oh, I took it to you Jews, but you didn't accept it, so forget you, I'm taking it to the Gentiles now. Like this is his eternal purpose. This was always God's plan to save both Jews and Gentiles in Christ Jesus. This is according to the eternal purpose, which he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom, in Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. And so I ask you not to lose heart over what I'm suffering for you, which is your glory, okay? 
And Paul goes on to say, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, okay, rooted, your roots go down deep, you cannot be moved, okay, and grounded, you're solid, right? That's maturity in Christ may have strength to comprehend with all the saints. What is the breadth and length and height and depth? Okay, to have the strength to just do what? To comprehend the love of Christ that it surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Okay, so Paul is saying, listen, I want you to be rooted and grounded and mature. And we're, we're, he's going to bring this up again later in chapter two. We're going to talk about this again, right? I don't want you to be, be deceived. I don't want you to be led astray by these lying spirits that are deceiving the nations. I want you to be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, to know the fullness of the word of God and his mystery that's been revealed to his saints in the last days. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. In other words, like if you have Christ and in him all are revealed all mysteries of wisdom and knowledge, if everything is revealed in him, why would you ever seek anything else? You have Christ. You have no need of a lesser celestial being that was created by him and through him and for him, but has rebelled against him and now wants to deceive you and lead you away from him, the source of all light and truth and life. And so Paul's saying this, listen, back to Colossians, for this I toil, struggling with all of his energy that he powerfully works within me. He wants to present them mature in Christ. He wants them to know Christ and the love of Christ and be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ and not led astray by deceiving doctrines, deceiving cults, deceiving spirits, seeking out something that is less than what they already have, right? And this is true for us today. We have to be careful of the lies, of the deception, of the manipulation, of the spirits that are out there that want to deceive us and lead us away from the truth that is Jesus Christ. In Jesus, in Yeshua, are hidden all the mysteries of knowledge and they're revealed to us in him. And so we have no need of seeking anything less than him. Remember that, okay, as we move on in the next chapter.